And welcome. Welcome, everyone. We're very grateful for this evening broadcast, this Sunday evening. And as many of you may know, that our world seems a little different, especially here in the United States. We're having many challenges, but at the same time, the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ himself, is more apparent and stronger now than any other time before. We have with us Doreen and her sister Melanie tonight. But before this broadcast, in the spirit, I heard several words. But what I can share with you now is it's so important more than ever to really have a real true relationship with Christ. You know, what comes to my spirit was something that Pastor Henry Schaefer shared with me several months ago. And through his many deliverances, at least over a thousand or even more, mm -hmm. he said what he was realizing that there's many people who want deliverance, but if they don't spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, that really put a deep sorrow mm -hmm. in my heart because Jesus is the one who does the deliverance. And we have to. Yes. We must have a relationship with Christ. Please. Imagine wanting freedom, but the one that causes freedom, we don't have a relationship with. It made me think a little deeper about myself and the commitment mm -hmm. and the time necessary to really get to know Christ. No one could do that for me. You know, what I'm also realizing is this, the closer we get to Christ, the more we realize some of the idols that we hold on to in life. I raise my hands first. Mm -hmm. You know, in the real church, which we represent ourselves, the most loving thing you can share with anyone is the truth. But in love, you know, there was a time in my life I didn't want to know the truth because I had to make changes. The Holy Spirit in me had to make certain changes, and I wasn't ready or willing. You see, tonight's broadcast will be very informative, and I know it will be led by the Holy Spirit. But I also believe there's going to be a lot of truth shared that might cause a little shaking in our spirit. But sometimes that truth is necessary for us to grow because we're at very critical times. And I would say we're at a time that we really have to pay attention to our surroundings, to the people that we have relationship with. And we more than anything else, have to be very, very honest of who we are in this given moment. So right now, I would like to bring Doreen and Melanie and welcome them to the broadcast. And before you do that, I'd like to just share that um, we're so in alignment with um, uh, with that today. And uh, it's been in my, in my spirit, uh, the narrow gate. Mm -hmm. And then just just the study about the narrow gate and salvation and repentance, because it's so important that this is this is truly a time that we really have to look to Jesus for everything because we can't do anything apart from him. So uh, the, the the road is very narrow. Did that come to you in uh, your, during your studies yes. this morning? Mm -hmm. This after, 
Well, you've been studying most of the day. Yes, yes. Why did you desire to really sit and be with God most of, of uh, today? Primarily because he's been quickening in my spirit certain things. Mm -hmm. And during this morning's service, I mean, I, it just really touched my heart. And I started, to, I mean, I really looked at myself and I looked at uh, how it, how it was when when I used to go to church years ago mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit was present and the th it, the things that were that was learned mm -hmm. but we have a tendency and I have at times was given up my first love which was Jesus and it's a return to to him and we get so busy I get very, very busy throughout the course of the day. And it's like, wait a minute, what am I doing? And I've got to really stop and, and focus because it just kept coming into my mind. Focus, focus, focus. And listening to you uh, and, and Pastor um, uh, Peterson last night, you know, at the focus and, and then the discipline. Discipline has to be there, you know, but I don't want to <laughs> ramble on. But I just I wanted to share that. Well, I think it's very important that you do share. Mm -hmm. I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to share because mm -hmm. as we learn ourselves, we can share our process. Yes, it is a process. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for sharing, Rebecca. So mm -hmm. let's bring up Doreen and Melanie. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you both? We're good. How are you? Good. Good. You share first, son. Anything coming to mind? Just welcome. It's good to see you again and have you back on. And Thank you for questions. having us. Uh, there are many questions here already, and it's going to be a wonderful um, broadcast. Uh, Doreen and Melanie, before we uh, start this broadcast, my first question, and I would like to surrender it to Rebecca. She has a question. I want to know what are you learning through deliverance with the many people that you're helping? But before oh, we please. before we do, would one of you please open up in prayer? Mel, you can open up. Okay. Lord, we come before you with grateful and thankful hearts for who you are and what you are and what you do in us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with all we have, our food, our homes, our family, our pets, Lord, our jobs, our cars that get us to and from wherever we need to go safely. And Lord, we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for uh, our friends that we've met through the One Source Network. We pray, Lord, that you bless it more and more each and every day as they go on the air. We pray, Lord, for protection. We ask, Lord, that your angels come and surround each and every one of us, so oh God, our homes, our windows, our doors, Lord, I pray that an angel of God encamp at every area of our homes, Lord, in, in our businesses, if we have any. So, Lord, we just thank you for this day. It was beautiful again, oh God. So we just thank you for our health. We thank you, Lord, for all the people that have been reaching out to us, Lord. And I thank you that you're using, especially my sister, to glorify you and only you get the glory for all that she's doing and helping other people that need deliverance, that need love, that need care, Lord, that just need an ear to listen to. So, Lord, we pray that you bless them as much as they're blessing us each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Before you began your prayer, and I looked at my wife because suddenly there were words placed on my spirit. And I want to say this. Dear Heavenly Father, your two daughters, Doreen and Melanie, has been working intently mm -hmm. to help others. Yes, sir. And we know what that looks like. And we also know, dear Father, with that type of work serving you in ministry, there's sometimes very strong spiritual warfare against us. So now, dear Father, I speak with the authority that you have given us. We speak peace and victory over every person 
in every situation in their lives. In the name of Jesus, yes. Father, we ask now that you cover them, Lord Jesus, with strength and confidence. Mm -hmm. And when one hurts, the other one hurts. Lord Jesus, let your yoke, dear Father, mm -hmm. be strengthened around them. We pray for them, dear Father. We pray for everyone during this broadcast. Yes. Let no fear come against us as we are strong in you, Lord Jesus. We move forward because of you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And Father, we Amen. Do, we place the cross of Jesus between all of us and, and um, spiritual enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. And we soak Doreen and we soak Melanie with the blood of Jesus and everyone here in the chat and ourselves. And we thank you, Father, for who you are. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Thank, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. The question I said prior, I would like to sort of adjust. And I feel to start with you, Doreen. What's coming to your heart right now that you think we should all know? Uh, the most important thing is Jesus. <laughs> we should all know that right off the bat, but. You have to rely on Jesus literally every day, every minute of every day, because you have no idea what's coming your way. And based on the fact of not strengthening yourself in reading or praying or sitting in his presence, you have to use wisdom because just like I've been working in the ministry and I'm given, given, given of time and effort and energy, um, I have to also remember that I need to sit at the feet of Jesus I need to be uh, as close to Jesus as I possibly can between needing his wisdom, his strength, his anointing, uh, the glory. You do nothing out of the glory. Everything happens in the glory. Mm -hmm. And I always make sure that I get into the third heavens. I don't do anything now unless I'm in the third heavens. So I make sure I pray. I speak to the Lord everything directly from heaven. And as I step in, I ask the Lord to come near, near to me not only as close as he possibly can, but I ask him, Father, come near to me as my deliverer, as my healer, as my provider. What I need him to be, I call him to me. I ask Jesus to come near me. I ask Holy Spirit to come near me, and I give him rule, reign, and a dominion over my life. I give him the keys to my heart, every room in my home, and my physical body, and my home I live in. And I ask that they constantly check those rooms and make sure they're empty of anything demonic, especially because we work in the field and we know how easy it is that a demon can hide. And the Lord has taught me about different dimensions and realms within us that there are demonic gods and demonic things still in, even though you think you've been delivered. If you don't go into these cracks and corners and these uh, places they're hiding, you're not truly delivered. And that's what's made me a lot more effective in the deliverance ministry when I ask the Lord to pull you out of certain realms. So when I've uh, learned about certain realms, I've, I've literally been asking the Lord to pull them out of these realms, pull down the kings, and boy, has it been effective. You know, there hasn't been one person that I prayed for that hasn't gotten completely delivered yet. You know, so because of these strategies, the Lord's taught me and it's so many people in all the years. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, that's not of God. But I have Bible scripture that can back it up. Mm -hmm. Even in Ephesians chapter six, it says it says realms with an S. There's not just one realm. There's more than one realm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I don't even know how many realms there are, but I make sure the angels go in and check them all. So mm -hmm. before I'm done praying with you, I make sure that they check every room, that the Holy Spirit check every room, and that the angels check every room and make sure they're empty. And if they're not empty, they're to drag them out of there. And I also use like uh, chapter one of Nahum, Nahum 1, 7 through 9. As we trust in you, Lord, you take out our enemies. You chase them into dark, nasty places, and they cannot, will not rise up or afflict us a second time. Whether they're attacking us with demons or they're attacking our physical body with sickness, I ask that they drive them out and they're never to return, not so much as a second time. You know, I can't stop the person once I'm done praying to open doors again. I warn them before I hang up with them or I stop talking to them 
to fill yourself with the word of God. Make sure there's no room in any of these rooms for these demons to come back and enter and live there. You don't want to give them any room. And the only way to do that is to constantly either play the Bible off your phone, your TV. I mm -hmm. mean, the way things are today, everyone has a phone in their hand or in their pocket constantly. You can let the Bible play while you're cleaning your house and fill your spirit. You can't say there's no excuse today that you can say, I didn't have time. Because you can put it on the radio in the car. But you choose what you're going to listen to. You choose. At the end of the day, what you choose to do? Sit at the feet of Jesus or sit at the feet of the people around you? You're a people pleaser or a God pleaser? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to because we keep so busy. But it's not only us that keeps busy. Satan will keep you busy so you never get near Jesus. And that way you can't learn and understand the truth. So as a seer, like the Lord's teaching me a lot about my gift, especially from all the time I'm praying with people. So sometimes we got to see to hear. And other times you got to hear to see. So that's actually scriptural. And people don't realize they both work hand in hand. Proverbs says <laughs> seeing and hearing are gifts from the Lord. And that's in both realms. So sp spiritually speaking, we see and hear first. And then in the physical realm, we see and hear with our own eyes and our ears. But without the two operating together, you're not going to understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, sometimes I'm praying and I'll get an effect of something on a certain body part, like my hand, my left or right hand. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was saying, Lord, I don't understand what you're showing me because it wasn't in both hands. It was in one hand. <laughs> and I said, "Holy, I'm, now I'm saying all this in my head. So I'm not actually praying out loud while I'm watching the person through the screen and I'm literally commanding spirits out. I'm asking the Lord, I don't understand what you mean by the left hand, Lord. Does it mean underhanded? Did someone do something underhanded? Were they un underhanded with money? Uh, what is going on with the left side? And at the same time, I'm getting all this feeling in my hand. The girl picks up her hand and puts it out. So her left hand is sitting out in front of me, and I'm like, okay, now she's putting her left hand towards me. God's making sure I understand. And I ask, I still don't understand. He goes on to say, of course, uh, I'm paying attention to body language, everything. And he says, remember the book you read? Now, I read a book from a man named Henry W. Wright, Better, uh, Be in Health, A Better Way to Wholeness. In that book, it describes on the left side breast, Cancer or lumps will come on a woman, and it's usually through unforgiveness on the mother's side. The right side is outside of the family or in-law's side. So that's when I got the, the understanding. The Lord's telling me there's unforgiveness coming through the mother's side. It's in the generational line. So I start attacking that. As soon, as soon as I start speaking, I want the demons that came in through the left side, the mother's side of the family, come up and out. The demons that came in through unforgiveness on the mother's side, the girl had the craziest manifestation and they came right out of her. Wow. So Bro. that's how God it like reveals a lot to me while I'm praying with you. And then other times I'll see a photo, a picture in my mind. So as I'm looking at you praying, I'm paying attention to the Holy Spirit. And a quick flash will come into my mind and I say it and that's the demon. Well, that's its assignment. So then we go from there to working with the Lord. What else, Lord? Who else, Lord? Who do I go after? And I just keep questioning the Lord at that you know specific time and need. What's next? What's next? Who do I go after next? So there's always a strategy and I try to pay attention to that. What's interesting, Doreen and Melanie, you know, as God reveals and grants you more revelation on how you are guiding people to be free mm -hmm. of demonic spirits. There's one thing that you said before you started sharing your experiences with helping people that I truly love and respect. You said that no matter how, quote, we know as far as deliverance, we ourselves always have to check in to make sure we don't have any unclean spirit. I want to thank you for that because you know what? Sometimes our pride 
can get in the way. I always want to know, God, show me if there's anything in me that is not of you. If I have an unclean spirit, mm -hmm. because what I realize, if we don't go there, we lack humility. Yeah. God honors us when we're humble. So, Melanie, what's your thoughts? Um, well, so we don't get prideful. We sh should always stay humble because we should just be like children in our hearts and just love everybody and see each other as God sees everyone else. We've all done things. We've all had a past. Uh, we did good. We did bad. So it's always to recognize where we came from as well and not forget that because a sin is a sin regardless. So we're no better than someone else. We shouldn't be looking down at anyone else in regards to what they've done, what they tell you. Um, we should just always be loving towards them because we don't know what brought them to the situation that they're in today because of the past. Well, yeah, and, and also um, to do that, that self-examination um, and through humility, you don't want any any spirits to transfer because sometimes quite possibly they can come in without us even knowing. Right. And so uh, with doing a deliverance, I mean, it's something that we should, and um, that I have done to, to ask the Lord, you know, show me, sh you know, show me, uh, to open my spiritual life and to, and to reveal to me, you know, if there's, and then there's uh, the uh, self-deliverance mm -hmm. as well for you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I like to take a pause mm -hmm. because the more I uh, engage in prayer and communication with God, the more I've been noticing my words between each word has more and more of a space mm -hmm. because just before the broadcast in the spirit I heard let him go let no let me correct that I heard let them go wow. in Jesus name so I just want everyone tonight during the broadcast and who's listening right now Doreen and Melanie I heard the words let them go. And there's several mm -hmm. requests that came up. And I'm sensing right now there's warfare. I'm sensing there's a very, people are angry. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are depending too much on people for their own emotional needs. People now are striking out at one another. Them go. Let them go in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm sensing something more honey, for a moment. Doreen and Melanie, Rebecca and I, and the people in the chat room and those listening. Each and every one of you are on assignment. Amen. And this is a most important time. This time period is most important that you now take your positions. You know, sometimes we can give our power away because we're too dependent on others. We want to seek others for the answers. Sometimes trust what God is placing on your heart. And whatever words he's sharing with you now, you must move forward. This is the time that we have to move forward with faith and confidence. I uh, want to honor this. Mm -hmm. I don't know who Dr. Wade is, has since passed, but he has a team of pastors who still do these teachings. And they are powerful in the spiritual battle realm. We'll pray oh, for seeing Dr. Wright, Dr. Henry W. Wright. Mm -hmm. We'll pray for him and his family. What I got in my spirit when you said that, um, 
let them go was a Pharaoh spirit. Mm. And I got that, that uh, in my spirit, that there was a Pharaoh spirit and that Pharaoh spirit um, also wants to keep people from, you know, away. You know, that's one thing I recognized. Anytime if I catch myself with this inner anger, and you know, as Christians, we're too ashamed to talk about it, but we have to talk about it. We have to expose what's really going on, not only in the world, mm -hmm. but inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even if we pray about it, sometimes we have to know it's a spirit. Doreen, <laughs> can you share with people now that don't be ashamed if they don't always feel loving? Because I well, think the thing is, you, you have to realize, even though we might be working in the ministry and most of the time we're OK. And even when you're doing deliverance, you seem to be doing a great job. But at the end of the day, you can feel all the spiritual warfare that has affected you. And you don't realize that because of the battle that went on that you don't really sense so much while you're working for Jesus. But boy, do you sense it later. And then you got a righteous anger. You have anger, and then there's a righteous anger. And there's a big difference between the two. And sometimes it's okay to be angry. It is okay. But then there's other times it's not okay. And it depends what are you angry about or what in the world is really going on. People might not understand that there is two realms of anger. And then how is the devil deceiving you or tricking you? So there's a lot of rooms that you could open doors to. And that being said and done, in the spiritual realm, as, it, as the physical we live in, we're still human. And you have to remember that all of us have, have like weakness, I'll say. But that doesn't mean Jesus still loves us. He works on you until you sharpen those weaknesses. It says when we're weak, we're really strong in the Lord. But it's when you recognize it. The key to is recognizing I'm feeling horrible in that area. I'm doing good in this area. But it does frustrate you when you realize you're not doing so hot in that area. And you can't help but get upset. Because you are really trying. But some things only God can help you overcome. That's now, right. what she said about the Pharaoh spirit, there's a few differences when I pray with people, especially where it's affecting them, putting them in bondage, the spirit of bondage, the spirit of blockage where he kept the Israelites, he's still doing that to us today in the spiritual realm. And then there's Egyptian gods and kings. Those gods and kings, Osiris, Isis, Ra, a Medusa spirit, those, all those spirits are holding God's people in bondage. And when they say they got a spirit of poverty, I go right after them. And that spirit of poverty coming through Pharaoh, there's two ways. I ask the Lord to pull them out. Now, the other thing, I, I'm going to talk about sand in a little bit because the Lord taught me a few things today and want, wants me to say it. So the other thing is uh, you got to pull them out of these dimensions. And one of them was the valley in the shadow of death. That's a dimension. Valley of, of dry bones is another dimension. And Job chapter, sorry, Job chapter 10 talks about the land of darkness. And I ask the Lord when I'm praying for people to open the gate, pull him out of the land of gloom and darkness and remove him or her from a land of confusion. So these are different realms of dimensions you can end up in and not know you're in a different realm or dimension or part of your soul is there. The devil's fragmented your soul and then taken part of it somewhere. And you don't realize it's actually not where it right, it's rightfully supposed to be. So... I also ask that he they be removed from a throne of unbelief. Remove him or her from the throne of unbelief. That's another realm. And a lot of people struggle with not really believing that they're even saved sometimes. Or God is hearing their prayers. God's not answering them because they believe something is wrong. Something's wrong with them. They're not who they think they are. They, they don't understand. There's no understanding. There's nothing registering, which is usually a mind control spirit. They're not understanding that a, a demon can be in a Christian. They're always taught in most churches, you can't, have a, you can't have a demon if you're Christian, and that's the biggest lie from the pit of hell. And then I, I learned about where, it, where the gloom and confusion realm or dimension is where even the light is as darkness, it says. 
Can you imagine where the light is as of darkness, how dark it is there? Mm -hmm. And people's souls are in that realm. So they can't see, know, or understand the light of Jesus because that's where they are. And when I'm praying with them, I'm asking the Lord and the angels to go in and get them out of there. And you should see such a big difference when we're done doing deliverance, how those people are when they come out of there. And it's almost like your first day where you've been in a jail cell and you haven't seen the light of day for years. And you come out, you're almost blinded from the light when you first step outside. You can't even see things clear because it's too bright for you. And nothing was really clear because what you're looking at isn't what it seemed to be until you can see it clear. So that's where a lot of Christians aren't seeing what they're supposed to be seeing. They think they see and understand, but they clearly don't when you hear them talk. Or they're reading and reading and not understanding what you, what they're reading because they're actually in that realm and they're not able to understand. The spirit of confusion comes on them and they can't even decipher the word of God because the Holy Spirit, of course, is not able to reach them. Well, he can't reach them, but where they're at, they need to be pulled out of. <laughs> so until they get deliverance the proper way, they're still in those realms. So you can deliver someone and only deliver them part way. You can have uh, like a quarter of them delivered and there's still three quarters in bondage. They don't know that pieces of their soul are elsewhere. And they don't know how to go get them and put them back. So I usually ask the angels to get the fragmented pieces of their mind and put them back together in their rightful place or their rightful position on the inside of them. And a lot of people through trauma have fragmented souls. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, uh, David also said in Psalm 142.7, David said, free my soul from prison so I can praise you. So if you notice, a lot of people in church can't even put their hands up. They just sit there or they stand up and not even enter in because they can't. But there's also scripture that says, open the ancient gates, Lord, that I may enter in and show you how thankful I really am. Mm -hmm. But how many people know to ask the Lord to open the ancient gates? There's also gates talked about Nehemiah, the dung gate, the fountain gate, which is about saving people. The dung gate is a deliverance gate. So there's, there's gates in there that people don't know we could enter into. And you don't ask the Lord to open these gates so you can step into. They don't even know they can. They think that's for those days way back then. It's not for today. But all of it is for today. And if you learn how to access these realms, you'll see a big difference in the Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine him open up the gate so you can step in and praise him in there? Do you wow. know what kind of praise you're going to be stepping into? You know what kind of presence of God would be in that realm with you? It's going to be like nothing you've ever sensed before. The tangible pre presence of God Almighty will come crashing down in that room. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. Go ahead. But how many people step into that kind of praise? So then I, you know, I also ask that he confront Leviathan at the gate. And the Bible says only God can stir up Leviathan. And mm -hmm. only the arm of the Lord can destroy Leviathan. And only the winds of the Lord can separate his shields. So even though I pray and I get the shield demons out of the way, I also ask for the biblical winds to be released on behalf of that person to destroy those shields, wow. and those plates, or those armor, those well, pieces of armor. That's very important. Yes. What you're sharing now, the other day we were mm -hmm. supporting someone through deliverance. Yes. And we heard the wind. We kept on hearing in the spirit, the wind, the wind. So what you're sharing with us is revelation. So, yeah, uh, and there's earthquakes you should be asking for. Uh, not earthquake, but it's not only earthquake, I should say. Earthquake, airquake, and seaquake. The Bible talks about all three. Then you have uh, the six biblical winds, north wind that drives rain away, the south wind. The west wind of deliverance, the east wind, the dry wind, and the whirlwind. I call on all of them when I'm praying. I ask the Lord to release all of them for that person. 
And I command the morning, I cause the day spring to know its place, that the high arm shall be broken, that the wicked would be shaken out of it, that they be released. The Bible says that he gives you the necks of your enemies. So I say, Lord, give him the necks of his enemies. Then I'll take my Bible out and I cut the neck off the spirit, right off the person that I'm praying for, right through the screen. Uh, Doreen, before you go any further, I want to go back to what you said about uh, Leviathan and the shield demons. And you, you mentioned that it's only God that can remove those shield demons from... Yep. Only the Lord can remove Leviathan. Only the Lord's winds can separate the skills so you can get in there. So when you're praying, even though you might know deliverance, the Lord's winds are moving. You might not know it when you're attacking the shield demons, but the winds of God will stop moving things out of your way as you're directly attacking those shield demons. Okay. What's very important, too, you're sharing a lot of mm -hmm. wise information, Doreen. Anytime you go after the uh, Leviathan, you first have to go after the shield demons because yeah. mm -hmm. Leviathan hides behind those shield demons. Uh, Melanie, I'm sensing, what would you like to share now? And we'll get back to Doreen. What's mm -hmm. coming in your spirit now? Well, I just have a quick question to ask my sister in regards to what is a shield demon? Uh, these shield demons are their demonic gods. They hold the strong man in position. They hold them in place. Unless you get them out of the way, you cannot get to the strong man. Mm -hmm. You cannot get to Leviathan. They hold them in place and they protect him. So unless you get them out of the way, you cannot get to Leviathan. You cannot successfully get someone delivered from Leviathan unless you remove them. And I have a small list. And the rest of the list, I rely on the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit shows me different things as I stop praying, then I target everything he's saying is there. Because mm -hmm. you can't have different shield demons. They're not always the same ones. There's so much to understand, to 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 learn uh, of all the different realms. And these are th areas that I haven't really um heard about that that uh, that much and one of my questions to you doreen is do you ever plan on writing a book uh everyone is asking yeah. me that including her um right that now was question didn't before the last one <laughs> yeah uh, i i haven't had any like room for even time for that she's the one that's good on the computer so i'd have to do it with her because if i'm no secretary I've been trying to do a good job making all these appointments and such, but she's much better at it than me. So thank God she's coupled with me because I wouldn't be doing the half of it without her at this point. I actually have to schedule an appointment with my sister so we can sit down and do this. <laughs> yeah, because I literally have been asked that. I don't know how many times. So I'm like, Lord, apparently you do want me to put something together. Well, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. So I'm just waiting on the Lord to show me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Um, this is all new to me. I've been doing things a certain way, and boy, did the Lord just open the gates wide. Yes. And we're just trying to keep up with what just came in, like the floodgates just opened, you know. And boy, is the glory realm moving. There was a question here for you, Doreen, and please excuse me, I'm looking to the right of right here looking for that question and then we'll get right back so continue and i'll bring the question up okay the next realm i, I wanted to say um is the misery realm there's a misery realm misery is a dimension and if you notice a lot of people are miserable and then they'll say you know misery likes company while well, every demon likes company none of them do anything alone so you know as far as when I, you know, started learning about the different dimensions, um, I also learned how to snap their chains. I would ask the Holy Spirit or the angels of God to snap their chains of misery, break the iron chains of misery and gloom, and lead them out of the land of gloom. Pull him or her out of this dimension. That's how the Lord taught me to pray. Mm -hmm. So I not only walk them through deliverance, kick the spirits out, then I ask their soul to get back to where they belong. Mm -hmm. So there's a completion in the deliverance where 
your soul wasn't in its rightful place. When it does get back in its rightful place, then you're healed. So the scripture 3 John 1 and 2 says, be healed even as your soul prospers, that you would be healed as your soul prospers. So once they're healed, I command the soul to prosper. And as the soul prospers, then they'll prosper in every area. So it doesn't just work in one area. It makes you complete. Then you're able to prosper. Mm -hmm. So that's where people don't understand. If you're not healed or you're walking in some kind of sickness, it's because there's something going on in the soul that's causing the sickness or disease to come. There's an opening, there's a crack, there's a piece missing. So if there's a hole in the door, someone can stick their hand in and unlock it and come in. Mm -hmm. so you don't want any holes in any of your doorways. Mm -hmm. I think, Doreen, too, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. could you share with the listeners and the viewers about how does the soul prosper? Because really it's about feeding the soul. Mm -hmm. So you Yeah, well, you feed the soul through the word of God. So you're eating, eating, eating. At first, yes. when you start reading, it says you're like a baby drinking milk. Mm -hmm. But the more you grow, you're not satisfied with just milk and you can't just, you can't keep growing. You can't become that strong with just milk. So then you start getting real food, the meat and the potatoes. So when you read a Bible, it's like, an onion peel and layers. You could read the same chapter again and again. And every time you read that chapter, you learn something or you notice something in it that you didn't notice before. Or the Lord gives you revelation of something that you didn't read it before. You got your t-shirt. <laughs> you see your t-shirt? It's your favorite shirt. Back <laughs> off, I have a sister and I'm not afraid to. Oh, that's <laughs> a, I yes. That, uh, so anyway, listen. the Lord starts to give you revelation through the word. You start to get strength, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. The power starts to move in you because you receive power when you read. Like everything you need comes through the word of God. Just you touching the book in your hand, it, it gives you power carrying it. If you keep it in your pocketbook, it's uh, amazing how throughout your day, just you carrying it around, it's like you carrying the tabernacle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So even when they put the tabernacle where that king, or I don't want to forget how, how it was, but Dagon, remember the, uh, the, um, I, I, the idol Dagon, when they put the tabernacle of the Lord, it destroyed the idol. When they came in, the idol's head was cut off and on the floor. And they were like, oh, dear God, what happened to our God? They thought he was all powerful. And then when they put the tabernacle of the Lord too close to it, it destroyed the title. I mean, sorry, the idol. It destroyed it. Took its head off. So that's what we want to do is basically when the Lord shows up, he takes the heads off of our enemies. That's basically what I get out of that scripture. There's a request yes. uh, for you to go to Tennessee. I assume it's for a conference. Uh, we know the person who's posting this to you, Doreen. And uh, if you want us to get more information to give to uh, Tony here, we could do sure. so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And God willing, right? Would that, <laughs> that be for uh, Melanie and... Doreen, Tony, could you respond back to us? Now, the other dimension that the Lord was showing me is the ropes of death that entangled them. So when you when you go um, back to this Pharaoh spirit, he dried the Red Sea. He made a pot in the Red Sea. So I'll actually ask that he that he uh, dry up the flood waters that are trying to bury them. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, there were two walls and at any time it could have come over the Israelites as they were traveling through. They had to trust God. He was going to deliver them from Pharaoh who was right on their tail. So then I'll ask them uh, to throw them, the, the waters that throw them to and from and make a man double-minded. I asked the Lord to pull them out of those ocean waters and to set their feet on dry ground. So now they will no longer be double-minded because they're not in the sea no more. And that usually comes through marine spirits, which come through mind control. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're in the deep waters and you don't know you're even in the ocean because the spirit of mind control is controlling you from the water, even the moon controls you every month. Excuse me. I think, you know, what you're sharing, and again, mm -hmm. it's just to bring relationship to each spirit with the spirit of mind control. Mm -hmm. Most of the time associated with that spirit of mind control is the octopus spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's mentioned water. So could you share with the listeners how mind control and the octopus spirit works hand in hand? Well, my, the octopus sits on the head and he has legs with tentacles. And they're literally wrapped around your head. Mm -hmm. And they're held in place. Those tentacles represent, again, again, a type of shield demon or what I call a demonic god. Mm -hmm. If you do not remove the demonic gods, then you cannot be successful in getting the octopus or the squid out. And the Lord also taught me a lot about the jellyfish, but it always comes to mind as what I call a Portuguese man of war, mm -hmm. where that Portuguese man of war has tentacles and it's a really beautiful looking uh, type of jellyfish where you'd be even tempted to reach out and touch that thing. And if you touch that thing, it paralyzes you. It has stingers on it that literally will feel like knives going through your body and it paralyzes you just like it would a fish and it causes you to sink. So that's when I also go after that thing. Okay. So if there's an octopus, a squid, or a type of jellyfish, especially that type where I just mentioned that's affecting you, I also remove that thing. And it's shield demons, meaning those tentacles that come off it and they're beautiful in color and everything, but they're, they're actually affecting you in a negative way. So I'll ask the Lord to pull you out of the deep waters, to put you on dry ground. Um, I, I just say things like set them free, put them on dry ground, get them out of the deep waters, release them from every marine spirit, whether it's those type we mentioned or not. Then there's an actual tooth that sits in the head where you literally have to cut that off to remove it. Mm -hmm. So you won't be able to get to the tooth unless you remove all the tentacles and the legs, which are a demonic god. Okay. Doreen and uh, Melanie, as you share this information, you know, there's many out there uh, wondering, well, how does she know this? Yes. I think Good it's question. very important now to share with them, Melanie, if you could, why is it so important to rely on Jesus mm -hmm. himself for deliverance? Tell them about what happened to you with your eyes and my husband, because I need to talk about sand. I don't remember all of that. All right, just say what happened to you, then I'll say what happened to him. I don't remember what you said. When I was praying. Sorry. Hold on. We're, we're, oh, we, can were doing, uh, we were doing a mind control deliverance in my hair salon. And when I called the demon up, something started happening to her. And it affected her eyes. And I'm telling her to tell her story mm -hmm. of what happened mm -hmm. to her eyes. And how we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. So then I start asking everyone, can everyone see clear right now when I call them up? What do you see and sense in any type of manifestation? Her and my husband both had a manifestation. She'll tell you about hers. Yeah, when uh, Doreen was talking and uh, we were going through that deliverance session, it literally felt like my eyes were stuck. And the only way I was opening them, it seemed like it was... Um, uh, like an elastic kind of feeling. If you can kind of picture, uh, like, not putty, but like an elastic, I guess you could say. Um, it was weird because even when I was op trying to open my eyes, it just felt like they were stretching to close. It was the strangest feeling ever. Mm -hmm. And her husband was saying that he felt like he had sand in his eyes. He was sitting on the side of me, and both of us were being affected at, at, with our vision in our eye. Mm hmm yeah, so that's where I was saying how important it is. Now, in the ocean, those creatures are stretchy. So that's how I knew right away that even the tentacles and the legs on the octopus are stretchy. They can reach out, grab things, pull it back to them. So she literally was sensing like the way the octopus's body acts. And I don't know if in, on her, they were right over her eyes. So wow. that's why she was sensing that. Mm -hmm. Then my husband was saying, Doreen, it feels like my eyes are full of sand. Where does sand come from? But the ocean. 
or the beach. So I said, okay, well, you definitely have a, a, a marine spirit on you. And that's when, of course, those were the manifestations that start coming up in our meetings. A lot of bottom fish like lobsters, octopus, what they do before they release their weapons, they kick up sand mm -hmm. so to blind the other fish. So in the spirit realm, those spirits were kicking sand and they can absolutely manifest in our physical realm. So that's yeah. a revelation mm -hmm. you shared about mm -hmm. how things in the spirit, because we're really delivering these spirits in the spirit realm. So yeah. that's very interesting that you shared that because mm -hmm. manifestation from the spirit realm to the physical realm happens more often than we think. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I, I just wanted to say there's a few things to do with witchcraft. That I just want to expose um, too many Christians don't really know some of these things they do. And one comes through salt. Again, salt water, salt, real salt. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. But also Satan uses the salt for other things. So you have to be able to discern the salt. And salt in the, in the physical is supposed to be known to remove negative energy. And there's a lot to do with salt. You shouldn't ever buy salt or get salt from someone else. And remember, we eat salt. Mm -hmm. So that's a way that anyone in witchcraft can put it in your food and you eat it. And that's ways that demonic things can now enter you. Mm -hmm. They also do very disturbing things with uh, blood. So they could get blood from any source, even a human being. And it can be also from a female during her monthly cycle, which is disturbing to say the least, but they do do it. Okay. And you don't know what kind of blood is in their food because you're not going to see it. You can't taste it if it's mixed all in a big plate of food, unless the Holy Spirit tells you don't touch that. You go and eat it, not knowing you just swallowed something. And a lot of times when I'm praying and I say, I command this this spirit to be vomited up because i'll ask them how do you get in and that's how they tell me they got in mm. and then i command it up the other thing is you know <laughs> you're not realizing that you two buy salt right and mm -hmm. and they have uh salt it, the the quickest way through salt or the easiest way used for properties that transfer either either whether in food or bath so they have bath salt Mm -hmm. So wow. you soak your whole body in that, not knowing where that salt really came from. Or if someone cursed it and put it in, in something and gives it to you. Oh, do this. Soak all night. It'll help you. It'll remove all the negative energy. But it also can put things in you. Very so interesting. You see kids today, they start using bath salts and they're inhaling them. And it's used as a type of drug to wreck up the brain. So that the demon has gotten creative to get our youth or adults even to smoke this stuff. Jeez. Very interesting. What uh, <laughs> Rebecca and I took a moment when you were <laughs> speaking and we smiled mm -hmm. at one another because last night we happened to go out and to get a little takeout food. And uh, for some reason, I was drawn to a certain dish that had squid and uh, it was squid. And Rebecca looked at it, and before she even picked it up, she said, uh-uh, I'm not going there. I'm, I am not. I am not. I am not. Explain what you were feeling in the spirit. I just felt marine spirits. Mm -hmm. And 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 that goes along with, with anything else that we, but we did pray over our food and, and mm -hmm. to block the transference of spirits. But uh, the reason, one of the reasons why I smiled and not to take um, that away was that there was a, um, I'm going to be very careful of how I say this. Mm -hmm. There was a video and mm -hmm. there was a woman with this long medallion. And it's, so, it's something that you brought up food because we've spoken about this before. This uh, we spoke about it uh, also prior you know, where this medallion was, um, uh, she was doing something over meat and she was um, casting spells 
over meat. So it's so important that that um, we're very we have to be very careful of what we eat. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why. And, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm I, sorry. No, I no, interrupted you. You, you please. go ahead. I interrupted. So it, um, it it's just something that we have to be very very uh, careful um, about. This, I think the awareness is just heightened more um, yeah. within. Because so you, you don't really think about it. You just go mm-hmm. and you purchase your food, and and uh, but sometimes you, you you know you'll get an unction. You know, don't buy that. Don't 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 touch that. But mm-hmm. other than uh, than that, you just you go in and you you purchase. And I think as you all share, mm-hmm. it's very important now. Even though there's a large. Mm-hmm. There's more demons on our planet now than mm-hmm. any time before. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, there's more angels yes. and help that we have available when we use those certain tools. Can you explain, Doreen and Melanie, the importance of knowing that mm-hmm. we're not defeated by what's happening because God sends his oh, angelic no. helpers? Oh, that's true. truth. Yes, he does send them, but a lot of people refuse the help. So you have to you have to learn to call on angels, work with angels, but many of us refuse their help because they've been taught by a leader that you cannot work with angels, that it is not of God. They start calling you a new ager, they start calling you a witch, saying you're operating in witchcraft, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because the Bible says in Psalm 91 that the Lord gives us, Mm -hmm. gives his angels charge over us. Mm -hmm. Now, if we imitate all that Jesus says and does, we too can give the angels charge over us. We walk in his authority. We speak his word. And when we speak his word, it isn't us talking anymore. We talk, they hear God's voice, not your voice. I that's that why today. now that's yes. the most important part yes that we all have to know angels hearken when to they the word hear of the word Lord. of god so you're absolutely correct but it's through his word not our own yes, you don't word. do things separated from the word and separated from jesus so first of all you have to receive jesus to receive his authority to do so once you've been given god-given authority you can use his word against anything or, or to come in agreement to receive anything. So you can use it to fight and you can use it to gain, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. bring things to you. You can call those things forth. You so can the, call things into being that aren't here yet. So the authority that, that God has given us through Jesus Christ, when we speak and uh, through deliverance, what the, what the uh, spirits hear is not our voice. They're hearing That's the right. voice of Jesus. Yes, that's why when you speak the word of God, the more I say scriptures when I'm praying, I beat them so bad that they're trying to get out of there. They're Mm -hmm. exhausted. I just keep wearing them down so they have no energy to even fight back. And as a matter of fact, lately, I'm seeing as soon as I start walking them through shutting doors, through repentance, repentance is the key that shuts the door. And Mm -hmm. once we start repenting, they're all just hightailing it. They already know it's coming. They're failing. You mm-hmm. can go report to Satan that you failed your assignment. Bye. You know, I, I'm not, I don't play with them. I don't give them no room to play with me. Another key is the word. And I'm only confirming what you're saying just to let everyone know that repentance Thank you, Lord. is the key. Yes. Yes. Repentance and forgiveness is the key, the key to deliverance. Yes. Uh, Melanie. What's coming to your spirit? As do you work with your sister frequently during deliverance sessions? Uh, sometimes I do. It depends on what time she schedules her appointments, if I can be here or not, because I work throughout the day. So, what are you learning through the uh, process about deliverance in your uh, relationship? Well, there's quite a bit I'm learning that I didn't know about. As I sit with Doreen and she's going through all these steps in her list that she goes through with the people, she'll start asking them questions and they pretty much tell her what's there um, with the type of problems that they've had or their history. Doreen will make notes as far as if they tell her they have a sickness, 
uh, if something runs in their family, um, if they've been abused or if they're um, addicted to alcohol or drugs, where it started, uh, why it possibly started, if the person knows what led them to start doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Doreen knows what type of demon is over what type of area, which I don't know all of that stuff. So I'm learning from my sister as I sit with her. Thank you, uh, Melanie. Could you address this question? You know, I it's from Jeff about the order of how we direct certain angels. Do we go and direct them ourselves or do we first have to ask the father to have his angels act on our behalf? Good question. Uh, you can do it both. You can do that both ways. You can ask the father to release angels by the hundreds. You can ask him to, to release five angels for something specific, 20 angels, 100 angels. You can ask the father to release angels of a certain kind. So let's say uh, you need a family member delivered. I believe it's Psalm 95 where the angel chases down your family member and brings them back. Mm -hmm. um, you can use scripture to do that. You can ask that uh, he release delivering angels to your family member by the hundreds or thousands. Uh, you can ask the father. Other times you can ask your angels to work with their angels. You can call your angels that are assigned to you. You have a guardian angel, high ranking angel, ranks and commanders above them. You can ask them to come near you, and then you can give them your request. So let's I, say I was walking down the street, and uh, I see probably five men walking towards me. Now, I'm alone, okay? Uh, although I'm not really alone, but in the physical, I'm actually alone, right? To those men, I look like I'm walking alone. I start saying, all right, I don't feel comfortable walking by these five men alone. It's dark, and I'm totally not safe, outnumbered. And you got to use wisdom. So I shouldn't probably walk by them just in case. But if I'm that nervous, I'll say, angels of God, come near to me. These men, I, I don't know. We're walking in the dark. They're ahead of me. I'm not comfortable. I'm asking that you protect me right now from these men. Make me either invisible to them. Make sure I'm under the radar. No one sees me alone. And that's that. I pray that way. I walk by the men. They probably see more men with me than them. Although I don't see all the angels, but the angels may appear to them just while we're walking by and then disappear again. Or they may not even see me at all. An angel may come down in front of me and they can't even see me through the angel that's now there in front of me. And I make my way past them safely and then I get to where I need to go. I believe now more than ever, and you mentioned uh, uh, you have knowledge about the angelic realm and how they are instructed to serve God's will on our behalf. Yeah. Very interesting. I had three very, very powerful angel encounters, but it was all about protection. Amen. Oh, yeah, one, just one. Mm -hmm. One night I was coming home from doing personal training and for some reason I looked through my rear view mirror and uh, I used to train qu quite a few police officers before they went into the academy when I had my gyms and I was doing a lot of personal trainers. But for some reason I looked and there was a police officer mm -hmm. and uh, it was a uh, town that I lived in. And for some reason, I felt this funny feeling. So I drove down maybe about a quarter of a mile and I turned into this gas station. And all of a sudden he pulls up. He gets out of his car. He looks in my car, roll down the window. I'm always very honorable and respectful. He looks at my car and all of a sudden he did not turn around. He went backwards like someone rewinded him. Instead of turning around, going back into yeah. his car, he got in backwards, turned all the way around, went in backwards wow. to the driver's seat and took off. Wow. The counter I had was one night I was coming home 
And all of a sudden, as I'm driving, I was maybe about two or three miles to my destination. And all of a sudden, I saw this velvet light cover this car, this beautiful, what is it, like a purple. Mm -hmm. It was like a U. But I see it often. Mm -hmm. And when the car went by in my spirit, I heard that was a drunk driver ready to hit you. Wow. So mm -hmm. there's so many things that our angels are doing and we're unaware. Yeah. I mean, what is the scripture? Is it uh, Hebrews 13, 2? About be kind of angels and by doing so, I mean, be kind of strangers. Entertaining angels, unaware of them. Yeah. Oh, please. I, was, I, I, was, I interrupted, but I just wanted to uh, reiterate that you call it the... Um, that purple light, um, the velvet light. It's you see that you see it often. Yeah. Amen. It, 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 I even started seeing it. Oh yeah, Re Rebecca. <laughs> yep. Did. But what? But what's good about this, mm -hmm. Doreen and Melanie? Mm -hmm. You know, when you share, you're not sharing it because it's something special that God That's is right. doing for us. Everyone has the ability mm -hmm. to yes. really further their relationship with Christ and hit. I know they say ask for a gift, ask for it. It's in the scriptures. But it seems like the more time I spend with Christ himself, naturally those gifts begin to emerge. They be they begin to solidify in our spirit. What's your thoughts, uh, Doreen and, Doreen and See, Melody? To me, uh, the more you worship God, God is the gift. And mm -hmm. through him, all the gifts flow. Matthew 6. So I chase after Jesus and him alone. And yeah. then everything Jesus has, he shares with me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I encourage people, please read, read, and read some more to the point where you'll know if people are lying, you will discern so sharply because people say, God never talks to me. I'm like, God speaks to you way more than you know. Mm -hmm. He's not picking oh. up on it because you're not recognizing his character is in everything around you. Because mm -hmm. the more you read about him, the more you see him everywhere. His, wow, they beautiful. say, I don't see him. I don't understand him. I don't, you know, and I'm like, because you don't know him. If you read your Bible, you would know him. And if you know him, you recognize him everywhere. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing that I think is very important to share. And I haven't been sharing it, but now I, uh, the other day I said, why am I not sharing this? When you are repenting, and when you're doing your part as far as being in the word, spending time with Christ, if there's any uncertainty, and this is when I take the log out of my eye first. Mm -hmm. That's where I start first. I repent. Mm -hmm. I take the log out of my eye in any situation that may be uh, something that I'm dealing with. But when I do all that and God senses the pureness of my heart, yes. then I'll ask God, God, show me this individual and what their true intentions are. God will show you. He mm -hmm. I mean, the person could be right in front of me doing something. I mean, we are so strong when we have that true relationship with Christ, but we don't hear these things enough in the church. Yeah, God's here to protect, but true discernment isn't always sensing the spirit. If we ask God, God, show me the individual in their intentions mm -hmm. for why they're in my life. God will either show you in a vision or some ways that you're going to know. But the most important thing that you have to do first, I have to clear my vehicle first. True repentance. Yeah, I got to really make sure that I'm coming from a good place mm -hmm. before he begins to reveal that to me. Amen. But even the scriptures say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness shall be added unto you. So mm -hmm. it's really wise that we stay glued to the very book. You know, the Bible itself is everything. It's like your lifeline. You know, we can't leave the house today without, oh, my cell phone. Oh, I, you know, I forgot this. I forget that. But I don't know how many people leave their house without a Bible. Wow. You know, and uh, anything can go wrong. And you literally can open it to any page. I don't know how many times I opened it to any page, read those two pages, and that's the answer that I needed. 
Yes. I don't. I can't even tell you how many times that's happened to me. I ended up in a position some way. I didn't know how to answer someone as they were speaking something to me. I've learned a lot, but I still don't know a lot. I'm definitely not arrived, if you know what I mean. Right. Like a lot of times I'm like, Lord, I don't know how to answer this. I don't even know where to start. I'll just take my Bible, open it up, read those two pages. Then I read it and I can answer the person. Yes. So that's beautiful. You're, what you're sharing with us is it's always very important to be teachable. Is yes. that right, uh, Melanie? Yes. Someone has an interesting question, and I'm going to ask Melanie, will she answer this one? Can I angel, say yes. Can you see I it? I say yes, for sure. <laughs> can angels bring you food from he heaven? Yes, they can. And the scriptures say so. They brought food from heaven. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If there's any other questions that you would like, anyone listening to write in the comments, please do so. Do you have another 15 minutes, uh, Doreen and Melanie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll be respectful to your time. So you're okay. You Let me go back to that food one. So what would allow an angel, <laughs> what circumstance... And I don't know if there's an answer to this. Would an angel deliver food? Can you give us an example of an angel delivering food? Uh, I would say while I'm doing deliverance, I can become very, very tired. And God expects me to pray for one more person. Let's say I, I'm good for doing uh, two, mm -hmm. three, and four deliverances a day. And normally I can do that easily. You know, because, uh, of course, I don't know, we're kind of energy to burn kind of people. <laughs> Both of us can do quite a bit in a day and uh, not be tired. So through the ministry, sometimes I find myself getting tired. and I'm saying, oh, Lord, I have one more to do. You've got to help me because I am exhausted. The mm -hmm. last few took a lot out of me. And I, you know, spiritually speaking, you don't know what kind of beating I'm getting in the spiritual realm, although I'm doing a good job, I'm taking a beating spiritually that wears down my my physical body. So even though I'm doing great in the spirit, I'm not always doing great in my physical body. And I fast a lot, so I haven't had any food to make sure I'm strong enough in the spirit to defeat these demons. And I'll ask the Lord for help. And they have brought me different types of food or other people food when they're doing that and they're weak to make it through the day. You know, and uh, it, it could be a little piece of fruit or it looks like a piece of bread. You just, I felt like things go down my throat. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see what it was, but I felt it go down my throat. It did feel a little weird going down, but I felt objects go down inside of me. And I didn't put my hand out and eat anything. You know, mm -hmm. so they can give you food. They can revive you. They definitely help me way more than, you know, you know, um, but I, I do ask for help often. I'm not, um, no stranger to asking for help, especially when I'm in those realms. So you're not putting any limitations on God and his ability. Nope. Mm -hmm. No, I'm pretty much like a child where I'm going to do it anyway and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to test the waters. <laughs> Yeah, because I read it, believe it, and ask for it. I tell everyone, whatever you read, you ask for. But that's key. Childlike. You the gotta childlike, be childlike faith coming to him as uh, as little children, you know, and, and um, he's going to perform that. Is there another? Say part of our soul can be in dark place. Does it mean our souls are made up of layers? Um, well, the soul can be fragmented. So I guess that's a good question. It can be layered, I guess, in that degree where the top layer may have been removed. That's how they did damage. You know, they say we got bruised. You know, your soul is wounded or bruised or you have um, like stab marks in your soul. Yeah, so it's like, are you talking about like uh, spiritual soul wounds? Yes, like, yes. So say it. someone's like really hurt. I'll just say you're married and you find out your loved one that you're married to cheated on you, how devastated you know you are and how deeply wounded you would be because you're soul tied to that person. It's mm -hmm. a whole different type of soul wound than someone just hurting your feelings outside of 
a soul type. So you can be really deeply affected by certain people where another person would do something and you won't even have half the wound you got from them compared to the soul tie connection that you have with someone. So there can be different levels and different degrees of a wound. I think like you mentioned just now, Doreen, when you have that emotional relationship with that someone, you know, that really increases and it brings more of a union to yeah. that relationship, yeah. those emotions, mm -hmm. you know, and along with the spiritual connection, you're right. Those wounds could be so deep that you feel like you can't survive. Yeah. Yeah. And some people even take their life because they believe this person is mm -hmm. a soul. This is my soulmate. And without their soulmate, they're not whole. That's the way they see it. So if they don't feel whole and that soulmate is not coming back to make them whole, then they don't feel like they're worth living anymore. And another thing, too, along with someone's passing and again, you know, learning this through someone we we respect in deliverance ministry, Pastor Henry mm -hmm. Schaefer, what he realized during his deliverance and over the years of study, he realized Quite often when a person passes, mm -hmm. another one may pass soon after because it's called premature death. Like yeah. you mentioned, they're so connected yes. that even if it's not their time to die, you know, some people have premature death attached to their spirit. So once again, it's study, knowledge, asking the Holy Spirit for revelation, listening to broadcasts like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, Doreen and uh, Melanie, before we end, there was a question I want to make sure I get. Oh, it's right on the screen. Mm -hmm. can, can you see it, Doreen or Melanie? Yeah, it says, can you teach on the earthquake, airquake, and the other one, which is the sea quake? If you look up in the Bible scriptures, uh, the Bible talks yeah. about each one. I'd suggest that you go yeah. into those, mm -hmm. use your concordance, and read about it. And it's pretty self-explanatory how God used those sea quake, earthquake, or airquake in the scriptures. And it'll train you how to use them today. But you know what you were just saying, Greg? What I also noticed is, let's say there's a spirit um, that was on one person. He died. That spirit jumps onto the next person in line. And that same spirit caused this person to die, jumped on because he wants to be in a living body. Now this one's gone. He'll jump into the next one and cause the same thing to happen. So now both men or a That's man, right. woman, whoever they are, will both die prematurely. Isn't this so interesting to realize that mm -hmm. we're not taught this in schools or churches? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. But, but See, when our mother got sick and she was dying, me, her, and my third sister were there with my niece. And I was praying my pants off on the side of that bed. She can vouch for it. And I was saying, the spirits that are in our mother are not coming to us. I was declaring that they stopped there with her. I covered all of us with the blood of Jesus. And I just kept praying, binding, casting them to the pit of hell where they belong, that they were no longer allowed to come to us, the next generation down. Mm -hmm. And I was doing everything I knew how to cancel that assignment <laughs> and send them back to the pit of hell where they came from. Because what they did to our mother is not going to be done to us. Wow. They're hey. not going to be the next in line to die a horrible death like that, what we all watched. And not only watched, we helped take care of them all. Mm. Melanie, do you mind once again, could you read what's on your t-shirt? I like that. <laughs> it says, back up. I have a sister and I'm not afraid to use her. And turn around and then wait. And her name is Dory. <laughs> oh, uh oh, I have a feeling that people will want to order some of those t shirts, you know. Yeah, we might have to have some made. <laughs> I well, thought I was going to make some more. <laughs> well, once again, uh, there, do you have any final thoughts? We'll go with you first, uh, Melanie. Like well, first off, I want to thank you for allowing us to be able to do this and have people listen and learn as well, because the pastors can only teach us so much. 
we're only in church so much per week. So I don't want to be looking like we're bashing any kind of churches or pastors mm -hmm. because That's right. mm -hmm. they do have a limited time with their flock. So it's up to us to read and study and learn, uh, even if it is from each other, uh, books, videos. We usually make recommendations to our friends or anyone that we know, um, depending on what they're dealing with or going through or what we use to pray and learn from. Like the few books that we mentioned about the warfare, praying against the warfare, um, they work for us and we've learned a lot through those books and some of what Doreen mentioned about the earthquakes and earquakes and sea mm -hmm. quake, mm -hmm. um, similar things like that were in these books. So the more that you say them and pray, the more you're learning how to use these um, items, I guess you could say, that are in the Bible that I didn't personally realize that they were in the Bible and that's a weapon that God created and we can use. Like Doreen saying, what we read in the Bible, we should do or say or um, act like, however, uh, mm -hmm. however I want to explain it. But just like, you know, there's different, I, I can't think of any of the, um, sorry, my dog is like pushing us back with the, <laughs> <laughs> Doreen's wrestling him down to the floor and he's moving me around, but. Um, yeah, there's a lot to learn. And as we read the Bible, we're not realizing that God is showing us a weapon that he's put in our hands that we can use and we can pray using these weapons that he created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just a matter of, you know, this is very good, like as far as teaching each other and learning learning from each other so i thank you for this opportunity that you give to us and the viewers. well i i look at it too that you don't go to work without your work boots right that's right you don't go to that's work right. without your your coat on or your hat on dress for the elements or dress for the type of work you're you're working so you're when right. you leave your home you're dressed for your day yeah. and right. just like we're dressed for our day in the physical we should be dressed for our day with all the tools and weapons we need through the word to be equipped for our day because we never know what's what we're coming up against mm -hmm. so i say you need to be prepared before you step out of your door even that's right and you, know, you mentioned you that we... your door, they're already sometimes you... coming at you you haven't even left the house yet so you just I, mentioned I try those. to tell people, be more aware of making sure you're more prepared than not. And yeah. you got the six watch, I mean, sorry, full watch times with 6 p.m. to 9, 9 p.m. to 12, 12 p.m. to 3, and 3 to 6 a.m. So those are specific watch times, and we're supposed to be on the wall watching and praying and making sure we know what's coming, you know? So you need to understand those watch times are really important. And if one, you can make time to pray during those watch times, that's a critical time to pray. One major thing, though, that I haven't heard, and I don't hear many speak about this, and I'm a, I'm a firm believer. Not only do we have the ability to deliver, I don't think there's nothing better than exercise, too. I have to exercise to keep my mind sharp, yeah. my body sharp, and my focus. I mean, even if you're going to walk, because you just mentioned boots. So very shortly, we're going to surprise you and Melanie, because we don't live far from you guys. You know, <laughs> Beth and I are going to put on our boots. You know what I'm talking about, and we're going to be at your salon. We're going to knock. We're going to say, the we're bringing you some food because <laughs> it's amazing how close we do live. Yes. And I believe that's by divine appointment too. Yes, do you believe is. that, Doreen? Yes, Mel yes. <laughs> For such a time as this. <laughs> for yes. such a time as this. <laughs> so, boy, let me make sure. Does a hot fudge Sunday come along with that food? <laughs> oh, you, you can get anything you want and Rebecca will pay for it. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna no, we, we're gonna make that. Oh, we know we're a real good ice cream spot. Yes, is. we do. Yep. So awesome. I think I know uh, this person. So if you could uh, stay on for about three minutes after we end this broadcast, okay. and uh, Rebecca, uh, Doreen, or uh, Melanie, would you one of you would you like to close with a prayer? I just wanted yeah. to say uh, before that 
that happens um, that the word of God is that is the greatest instruction manual <laughs> that you can ever possibly have. And throughout gotcha. this entire broadcast, Doreen has brought up so many points about uh, prayer and, and uh, using God's word Melanie um, and Melanie mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And um, using God's word. And it's, it's so very true. It's praying the scriptures and, and um, getting into the, the concordance and, and, and uh, looking all of this information up. And we thank you both for shedding light, you know, the Holy Spirit through you shedding light and um it is good to be teachable yes oh, Amen. So. and also i recommend that um we take communion daily yes Ooh, that's something that that's you've been, been sharing <laughs> rebecca's been sharing that with me about commun yes. communion and the need to right. you know right. really yeah because that brings the Ooh. inner healing to yeah. our bodies and we need that daily as well yes. bless you felicia Okay. You're welcome, Jeff. <laughs> hey, let me bring these up. You're welcome, Kay. I think everyone would uh, feel honored. Thank you. Doreen prayed. Okay. And we would be honored if you prayed, Doreen. Okay. okay. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that we have each other. We thank you for this broadcast. We ask, Lord, that your hand remain on the broadcast. Every mm -hmm. single piece of equipment and very much important that you keep your hands on Greg and Rebecca in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you and we ask Lord, that you would forgive each of us for anything we've said, done, or even so much as acted like that's clearly not pleasing to your sight. Wash us clean and nothing but the blood of Jesus. Soak us, bathe us, drench us in that blood that we may come before you holy and acceptable. I command our souls to go down and rest and our spirit to rise up and step forward. I command our body and our flesh to go down and rest and our spirit to rise up and step forward. Father, the word says we worship you in spirit and truth. We communicate with you in spirit and in truth. So we thank you, Father, that we ask for access into heavenly realms. Jesus, you're the door. We step in through you and only through you. Now, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, draw near to us. Draw near to us as our protection, as our deliverer, as our guide, as our equipment. We, you provide and equip us, Lord. Come near to us, God, as our peace. Angels of God, draw near to each and every one of us on this broadcast. Everyone that can hear the sound of my voice. And those who do not know their angels, I pray, angels of God, that you'd make yourself known to them. Start teaching them how to praise God, worship God, read the Bible, understand the Bible, train them and teach them all about heaven and heaven's assignment. I ask, Lord, that you would release the books that were written about each and every one of us by God himself to the angels. Give the angels all the keys they need, access they need, all the food they need, all the drink they need, bread, food, manna, and fruit from heaven in great abundance. I ask, Lord, that you would bless our angels and reward our angels for doing a great job every single day they remain faithful to you lord and faithful to us secondly so i thank you lord that they're on assignment and they do not stray from their assignment and if any one of them is a wall because their person has not known how to work with their angel i ask holy spirit go back out there and get those angels and put them back in, in their assignment in their assigned position and teach your people, Lord, how to call on the angels and work with the angels that have been specifically assigned to them to carry out your will here on earth. And I thank you, Lord, that we do everything from the third heavens down. We do not live from earth. Sorry, we do not pray or do anything from earth up. We do it from heaven down. We are seated in heavenly places, seated at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in our right mind. And I thank you, Lord. The Bible says we have the mind of Jesus Christ. And we think like him. We act like him. We do like him. And all that we do, we do it to glorify him and him alone. So we do not take the glory that belongs to Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we give you rule, reign, and dominion. Angels of God, we give you rule, reign, and dominion over us, our homes, our atmosphere, our pets, our vehicles 
uh, uh, property lines, everything in them, on them, around them, in the name of Jesus. And angels of God, no one is to get near any one of us. They are not to get within 50 yards of any one of us physically, unless they are sent by the Father himself, Jesus Christ himself, or Holy Spirit himself. No one. No one is to get near our businesses, our homes, our vehicles, unless they are sent by the Father. Unless they're called to trade with us, they are not to get near us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I thank you, Father, for divine protection. I thank you, Lord, for a sweet night's sleep. And I also ask that the angels come and they take us on tours of heaven while we sleep. Mm -hmm. Take us to places. Lord, all around the world, so many of us cannot go on vacation. So this is a specific request that you would take us, transcend us to other places so we can see the beautiful places on earth that you've created that we cannot get to either by uh, because we work or there's no way for us to get there because of the things we're doing or we can't at some time even afford to get on a plane or a train or a boat. So, Lord, I'm asking that you take our spirits there because at other times in the world, right now, it's this time at night here, but it's morning somewhere. So I thank you, Lord, that you would take us to the most beautiful places on earth that we have not yet seen and take us to the most beautiful places in heaven that we have not yet seen. And I thank you, Father, with the help of the angels and the Holy Spirit, we can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us and equips us to do so. Now, Father, train your people how to use your word yes, in amen. Jesus' name. That amen. is the most important thing, that we remain close to Jesus. We have access to Jesus any moment of every day. And I thank you, Father, that we do not need a person on the left or right of us as much as we need Jesus. So we really need you, Jesus. And we ask that you make yourself real to each and every one of us, that not one of us be left the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 And could we say a, a prayer before we close? There was a prayer request that just came up for uh, Pamela. Pray with me, my knee replacement surgery goes well on 530. Dean stood by my bed. Did did you have uh, facial Trust plastic surgery done and it caved in on your face? Let me go back. Let me Blessings. see. Facial plastic surgery would collapse and it did. You know why it did? Because you came in agreement with the demon. So you have to come out of agreement with the demon. So you pray this way. Father, forgive me for coming in agreement with every word the demon said. If now that demon entered me through that wrongdoing, I command him to leave me in the name of Jesus. Um, I also pray with you in agreement that your knee replacement will go well. And that will send the exact nurses, doctors, everyone who's specifically assigned to you and your knee in Jesus' name. But I do want to pray before that surgery that God will give you a new knee, that the angels be released from heaven right now with the new knee, that you will not need actual surgery in Jesus' name. Because mm -hmm. God is the great physician, and he has a whole room full of brand new knees. So I thank you, angels of God, that you would go into the heavens right yeah. now and bring that woman her new knee Yes, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, yes. Yeah. So that's one other broadcast mm -hmm. with agreement with Doreen. We can talk about the... Uh, uh, place in heaven where they release uh, body the parts. body part room, yeah. the body yeah. part room. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're really honored. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, tomorrow I just want to come in agreement with everybody that uh, we're going to pray for a pastor tomorrow morning at mm -hmm. 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And his name is Pastor Donald Lee. Mm -hmm. And we want to come in agreement that he's going to be completely delivered and healed of kidney issues. Right now he's on dialysis and his physical body has been worn down. This man's a mighty man of God. He's uh, been in deliverance ministry for years. He's been a pastor for years. He's traveled all around the world. The Lord has really blessed this man. And I'm asking that everybody pray in agreement, backing mm -hmm. me up as yeah, not only our covering, really but to see to it that I do everything the Lord shows me how to do to get this man free and healed. Yes, in Jesus' amen. name. 
heard and validated and were in agreement. Mm -hmm. So we yes. thank you, uh, Doreen and Melanie. And once again, if you could hold on just for a moment, we won't keep you uh, much longer. So we thank everyone for listening. And thank could you, you give me your email address or your Facebook page? Uh, my Facebook page is Doreen Jodden. It's a picture of me and my husband in black and white. Uh, that's the right Doreen Jodden. Most of the pictures are in color, but mine's in black and white. I've been able to reach more people through Messenger, and they don't have to pay for the phone call because some of the people we're talking to are all around the world, and I can't imagine what the phone fee would be because I'm on, on each call for hours. And my email is a sound like thunder at gmail.com. Well, we thank you, Melanie. And Melanie, I want to buy you that uh, ice cream. I really yeah. want to buy you that ice cream. <laughs> we got to figure out. We got to figure out what we're going to buy Doreen yeah. here. But uh, we will do that. Yeah. And uh, I thank everyone. And uh, we just received some information that soon is going to be yes. a huge cause for celebration. And uh, God bless him. We we want to help. Uh, many anointed ministries. So we thank everyone. Keep us in prayer. And God is absolutely moving in us and outside of us. Amen. Have Jesus a good name. night. Good everyone. night, everyone. Good night. Good night.